So, for example, there's, there's some actuators out there that don't even meet the current requirements. But if you have it on there, the manufacturer still does make fire smoke actuators. You can still put them back on there. Why you would want to do that, I don't know. But, uh, but with the Bolimo, we are approved with every damper manufacturer here in the U.S. for requiring smoke dampers. So ours can go on anybody's dampers that are out there. And the way to identify a fire and smoke actuator, so I'll start with that best, fire and smoke. Uh, because these actuators have to have uh, UL555 and UL555S approvals. Um, all the ones that start at FS have those approvals. Torque rating, uh, 133 down to 30, and actually, as Brian mentioned to me this morning, uh, we actually have 180 inch pound as well for this. At all the fire and smoke actuators have to be square return. That's part of the life safety issue there. Uh, power supply, we've got the 24, 120, and Europe, we've got 230. Uh, one question I get quite a bit is, you know, which do we sell the most of? Really, it's split about 50-50 between the 24 volt and 120 volt. Uh, typically, what happens in, in that case depends on who's wiring up the actuator. If it's electrical, then it's usually 120 volt. If it's the uh, temperature control contractor, they're usually doing 24 volt. Control. The majority of the fire smoke uh, damper actuators in the country, or that most manufacturers make, are just on off. Um, on the other hand, we have a couple unique uh, fire smoke actuators. We have a dash SR, a 2 to 10 volt, and we also have a three position actuator, which you can use for balancing. Uh, 2 to 10 volt can be used if use a fire smoke uh, damper, you can use it as a control damper as well by using that dash SR model. Uh, and then the uh, three position dash BAL, that can be used as a balancing damper as well as the fire smoke damper. And again, a dash S means it's got built-in auxiliary switches. The US at the end, that's an old designation for us when Limo first started, the majority of our actuators for the U.S. came from Switzerland because uh, initially we were just, you know, the sales arm just starting out here in the U.S. trying to get some sales. That U.S. was put on the end there so they knew which actuators to send here because we got our 60 hertz here over in Europe it's like 50 hertz. Uh, so that just identified which actuator belonged over here. Now we make all of our product over here. Uh, occasionally we'll get something from Switzerland. But, um, so we've been doing away, anytime we come out with new actuators, we've been doing away with the US designation. Non-spring, we have the same setup. So we have the LM, like I said, the M just means motor. And we run from uh, 360 inch pounds down to 18 inch pounds. And then we have the linear, a couple linear and one rotary uh, style actuator as well. Next, then we have the, the speed of the actuator. We have the, the quickest running Q series, some fast running actuators that are a little slower than the quickest, but faster than standard. And then if there's no designation, as you can see here, LMB24-3, one of our most popular actuators, uh, that would be running at normal speed. Again, we have basic and customized. Actually, this non-spring line is, uh, is where we started the basic and customized. Uh, that's been out for probably six or seven years now. Yes? Don, back to your, back to your speed, you know, quickest running and fast running, uh, <laughs> you know pretty vague. Is there a, what if you have a requirement that says I need it to respond within this time? Can you really, do you have to spec that or is that, you know, in, here's what you get. Right, in the documentation, well, two things. We have some that have specific run times, like you're saying, 
but then we also have the MFT actuators where you can program the run times. Okay. And each MFT actuator has a different range within which you can program. And when you go to program one of them, it'll tell you what your range is. And it also mentions in the book here. Um, so on page 1-1, one one, um, it will show, show you the motor drive time, and then the second column will show you the spring return time. Okay. Now those, on that page, I don't see any that are the quick running, uh, but on page 1-2, one there's an, at the bottom of the first section there, there's the LFC 24-3. Uh, that has a 90 second push time. Thank you. Sure. Again, required power is pretty easy when it's 24 or 20 volt. Uh, then we've got our control signals, similar to what we had before. Then on the uh, non spring actuators, you can have a dash T option, which means it's a terminal strip rather than the three foot lead. We also, tip, the typical is the blank, which would be your cable, and then we have some where you can get uh, built in auxiliary switch. The majority you cannot in this one. Uh, the majority of the non spring, you buy a separate uh, component for your auxiliary switch. So just a little exercise. Who can tell me what the LF means? Thirty-five. Yep, thirty-five. What else? What does the F tell you? Spring return. Right. Thirty-five inch pound spring return. Twenty-four. Easy. Dash three. Control. It's your control. What kind of control? Right. Floating point. And then the U.S. just means it's ready for the Americans. <coughs> Another exercise, N.K. Yep, 54 inch miles, what does K mean? Right, electronic failsafe. The Q? Quickest running. Yep, it's running, very good. The B? 24. Voltage. Dash SR? Not spring return. It's not spring return. <laughs> no, this one's electronic failsafe. <laughs> 2 to 10 modulating. Right, 2 to 10 modulating. Yep, very good. I say if, you want, if I want you to remember anything out of this entire presentation, is that SR is not spring exactly. return. <laughs> exactly. FS? them NEMA 4, you can get enclosures for them, but the EF itself actually comes with a NEMA 4 built right onto it, and it is NEMA 4 itself. So the other actuators that you have to you, order a separate. You would need a separate enclosure. Yep. Yeah. 